Okay, let's uh, let's look at our next chapter, which would be the muscle skeletal system. Now, the muscle skeletal system includes your bones as well. Okay, so muscle skeletal this doesn't include the muscles, but any procedures that may be done on the bones. And once again, I just look at that. I just love this book. So you know, if you if you got a scenario and you don't know where a particular muscle is. Hey, you got a picture right here to help you out. So you won't have to, um, uh, like, oh, man, I don't know where that at. Look, this book has to become your best friend, okay? You have to allow this book to be your best friend, to know where you can find stuff. Because uh, somebody they may just say they did a box of, of the trapezes. And you might like, oh, my gosh, I don't know where that at. Well, they got a picture here for you, okay? So it's just wonderful. That's why I like the professional edition because it can show you things. So you're working on the foot, you got to do a bunionectomy. Look, it show you uh, your phalanges, which is your toes, your uh, metatarsal here, the top uh, bones on your foot, your tarsal bone, now you're up in your ankle. You don't have to stress it out. You know, um... A lot of people tell people, oh, you, you got to know so much. And it's true, you do. But you also have to be smart enough to know you're not going to remember everything. See, you're not. Now, there's certain things I do know. I, like, I know phalanges and toes are the same thing. When my doctor tell me he's working on the metatarsal bone, I know he's talking about the foot. So I don't really, as because I've been coding a long time, I don't really have to go to this picture. But you may have to go to the picture. And you need to have something, your know, pictures identified for you. Now, depending on who proctored your test, they may not like for you to have a lot of tabs in your book, whatever. But according to the APC, who minister tests, of, uh, have uh, instructors that administer, licensed sites, let's put it like that, that administer this test, then um, they have some guidelines that they have to follow, but you can have your books tab. But if you uh, want to check me out uh, by going there, I'm, I'm fine with that. In the, at the very beginning of the muscle skeletal system, you are going to want to read this. And you want to know what they're talking about here. They tell you the definition of open treatment and closed treatment. That refers a lot of times to fractures. When somebody come in with a fracture, the fracture itself can be closed. That means that the bone is broken, but that bone is not protruding up through the skin. It's not coming to the outside. That's a closed fracture. Sometimes they can just push the bone back in place. That would be a closed reduction. Um, and um, when it's an uh, open reduction, they say, look, we're going to have to go in. They cut the patient open. They go all the way down to that bone, and now they can push that bone back in place. Uh, they visibly can see into that, uh, and then they're going to insert pins or screws or whatever the case may be. So you need to know, in this book, it tells you what the definition of a closed treatment is. It tells you the definition of your open treatment, uh, your percutaneous. Now, for whatever reason, CPT don't want to come into the 21st century, okay? So, in the book, they still use manipulation. Our doctors, the only time doctors say manipulation is when they really truly manipulate the bone without it being a fracture most of the time. So, they may, somebody can come in and have what they call a frozen shoulder, okay? So, that means they can't move their shoulder. So the doctor would put that patient on the anesthesia, go in and move that shoulder around. Now he's manipulating it. See? But CPT also used um, manipulation for closed reduction uh, or, or open reduction. See? But see, doctors don't say, well, I did a ORIF. That's how the doctors say open, retur open reduction internal fixation device. But when you go to CPT, it may say, um, it won't say reduction, it will say manipulation with a device. So, watch out for that. They also tell you at the very beginning of this thing about uh, connected tissue tumors. 
Uh, so you want to know that because I do believe you'll have a question or two on that. And then the rest of it is pretty um, uh, self-explanatory. Once again, you know, when you look at this at the very beginning of Penetrating Wound, they give you a lot of information there. You need to read that. You need to study that. And that will help you with your test. Okay? Um, and then trigger points injections. Notice with trigger points injections, that is category 20550 is where it begins. It tells you, in, and notice injection has an S in parentheses. That means that's a code that's singular or plural. So if they give two injections, um, you may get the code just once, okay? So because the injections, you don't get the code for each individual injection. Now what you can uh, get the code for, if they tell you they did one or two muscles. So your, your scenario will actually identify for you if they did one muscle. If they did three injections to one muscle, that's just one code. But if they did two injections into two separate muscles, now you got two codes. And that's how you have to look at it. Your orthocentesis that you may do, that's drawing fluid out of that joint. joint. They got it broken down by major joint or small joints. And they tell you what they consider to be major. You don't need to miss that question. Uh, I'm often surprised when people miss this question. Um, the only thing they want to know is with the major joint, was it with an ultrasound or without an ultrasound? They tell you what a major joint is, okay? Uh, so, uh, or the middle, uh, medium joint, a small joint. They tell you that. And see, if you look at two, 20610, orthocentesis, that means drawing out fluid. Aspiration, they can aspirate the fluid. Or they can put an injection in there. And they said major joint or a bursa. And then they put in parentheses what they consider to be a major joint. Your shoulder, uh, what else? Your shoulder, your hip, and your knees, and the subacromal bursa. People, you don't have to guess. See? So if, if, the, if the scenario said the patient had an aspiration of the left knee, you, you have to know that's a major. It's right there in the book for you. Uh, sometime when I give people a test, but I won't get into that. External fixation devices. The only time you get to use the external fixation device number with two times. Number one, they must do an external fixation device. See, everybody don't get an external fixation device. They must get one. And then number two, the uh, reduction code or the pinning code. Because see, you have two codes. Most of the times with your external fixation devices, they, uh, they have some type of fracture. They may pin that fracture, um, you know, open or close, and then they will uh, add this uh, external. Now, if that reduction code, say with or without an external fixation device, do not use these external fixation codes. Because that code is saying, if you do one, you call me here. And if you don't do one, you don't get the code in here, see. So always remember when that code, when your primary procedure says with or without external fixation device, you don't get the code in both. So if they have that code with that um, major procedure, guess what? If you code that, you're, it's going to be wrong. If your code does not say, does not say with external or without external, then, of course, you're going to have two codes. And, of course, they're going to tell you if it's a uniplane or multiplane uh, in the real world uh, here in the testing area. What is another uh, good one? Um, I think they like sometimes to do um, that halo cast on the head. So, it's very self-explanatory, uh, whatever the case may be. For example, I was talking about um, fracture. If you have an opportunity to look at 21310, close treatment of a nasal bone fracture without manipulation. So if the doctor doesn't say he reduced it, guess what? That's without manipulation. If they use the term reduction, that's with man, uh, manipulation. And then, of course, they want to know that they stabilize it. Well, 
that meant that they had to put some type of device on the nose to stabilize that fracture. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time there. Look at your osteotomy codes. Uh, they love to do that one uh, as well, so pay attention to that. Percutaneous vertebroplasty and vertebral augmentation. Um, just make sure you pay attention to what the code itself says. Like for instance, 22510 says you got a vertebroplasty done. The bone box is included. So if they gave you that CPT code for the bone biopsy, guess what? That's the wrong answer because it tells you it's included. It also tells you this code can be a unilateral code or a bilateral code. Therefore, you cannot use modifier 50 on this code. So if they gave you 22510 with a modifier 50, that's the wrong, that's the wrong answer. Because this code tells you it's unilateral or bilateral. It also tells you it includes all imaging. So if they gave you the code with this code for a CT scan or MRI or fluoroscopy, guess what? That's the wrong answer. So if my patient came in and had a vertebroplasty, uh, I don't know what I want to say, of the lumbosacral area on the right and the left, and they used fluoroscopy, guess what? I just got one code. 22511. That's it. Just because they give you these options as an answer, you have to know which is the right answer, okay? And they're going to give you a spinal fusion to code. I won't have time to go into all that today, but once again, read the notes. It tells you uh, 225554 through 22558 is for a single interspace. So you get your, get your diagram, look at your back pictures, because from uh, interspace, uh, so you got L1 to L2. What's in between L1 and L2 is your interspace. Do not make this complicated. And I think they tell you also um, uh, there's some additional modifiers that you cannot use. There's some that you can use. So you want to pay attention to this. Also, this, uh, these codes now include the disectomy. And so you want to be careful because if they give you a disectomy code with this, that may be the wrong answer. And you got your spinal instrumentation. And notice uh, cervical fusion is always going to be up here in the neck. Okay. Then you have what they call the posterior uh, lateral or lateral. Most of the time posterior means back. So uh, as sometimes they'll cut the patient like here. Uh, side, sort of like a little slant on the neck. But that's still a cervical uh, fusion. Um, and once again your posterior generally it's going to be on the back, and sometimes it's just how they actually cut the incision. I wish I could uh, have my PowerPoint. Uh, maybe the next time I do one of these, I'll bring up the PowerPoint or do one just a little bit separately. So you want to pay attention to that. Um, and I think that's pretty much um, some of the major things in your... Um, in your muscle skeletal, always remember too, uh, sometimes in this muscle skeletal section, you got your tendons involved. They may do procedures on tendon. Uh, sometimes they may transfer a tendon from one area to another. Uh, sometimes they actually cut it uh, and uh, they cut it and take that piece and put it somewhere else. Once again, some of that is separately codable. Some of it is not. Pay attention to the codes. Because the code will tell you with transfer, without transfer. Your, and sometimes the notes will tell you, you also need the code to transfer. So if you just, and, and just begin to go through your book and, and look at these different ways uh, procedures are done. Especially, they're going to give you fracture the code. They're probably going to give you a tendon transfer the to, uh, to code. Pet. Uh, excision or lesions uh, from the muscle. Uh, they love this uh, particular um, temporal mandibular joint procedures. Study those. Pay attention to those, okay? Um, I think we're going to, oh, I know one other little thing I want to, um, that you have to really pay attention to. They don't give you a bunionectomy. Um, your bunionectomy has, they have tried to simplify bunionectomy. 
um, in the last several years, they have uh, gotten rid of a lot of codes and um, given us new codes. Pay attention to your diagnosis. See, when you get ready to code bunionectomies, your diagnosis can help you. Uh, look at 28289, helix rigus. So your diagnosis may say the patient have rigus, but your procedure may not say it. But because they have a rigus and they're doing some type of uh, correction on that toe, if you got a very specific code that talk about the rigus co uh, correction, and you do 28289 to 28291, you want to be in that category. See, rigus is different from a bunion. Rigus is a stiffening of the joint. And that bunion is, of course, a soft tissue mass on the outside. Your bunions are generally on the greater toe, left or right. Don't forget to use your modifiers. Uh, when you get into um, um, coding, uh, I forgot to mention this, on your skin and integumentary system, don't use modifier 50 and don't use left and right on those codes because two, they have too many different body parts uh, in there. When you get to your toes, your legs, your arms, you want to use left and right. You're only going to use modifier 50 bilateral if the code does not say, does not say unilateral or bilateral. If that code say unilateral or bilateral, you cannot use modifier 50. So pay attention to that. And the other thing is um, application of cast and strapping. Please read the guidelines on that. That is key because one of the biggest thing about this uh, application of uh, cast and strapping is who going to do the follow-up. If a patient go into the emergency room and have a, a, a cast put on, generally that ER doctor is not going to follow up that patient so they get to code the cast. If they call in the orthopedic surgeon and the orthopedic surgeon put the cast on and say they are going to follow that patient up in the office, do not use the strapping and cast code, okay? You have to use the actually code that was done like a reduction or whatever the case may be. Then, of course, you got to know endoscopy procedures. That started at your 29800. It's very, very important that you know what's included uh, in those codes and what is not included uh, in dealing with uh, these uh, codes. For instance, if you're doing some type of uh, arthroscopic surgical procedure, now, another little thing I want to remind you of that they may try to get you on is this. They may just say the patient had a meniscectomy. Most of them they're going to tell you arthroscopic, but let's say they don't. They just said the patient had a meniscectomy. They give you a note, and then they give you your codes. You know what you want to look for to know if it's arthroscopic? They're going to talk about putting the portals in. See, they're always going to make an incision, not a big one, small one. They're going to insert the portals. They're going to put a camera on it, and that's how you know it's arthroscopic. See, because sometimes doctors forget to tell you that. That's the mark of a great coder. You know how to go to your documentation, and you will know how to uh, code something. And also remember this, CPT does not care nothing about a robotic procedure. You do not have a separate code for robotic procedure in CPT. Okay, I think that we have covered quite a bit today. And I want to thank you all for joining in today. Uh, of course, always uh, in your coding endeavors, I wish you much success. Don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn, um, Facebook. I think we do tweet uh, as well. Uh, we don't do a whole lot with Instagram. Too much picture taking and a great coder don't have time for all that picture taking. If you're taking that many pictures, you're not coding, okay? Uh, and we get paid to code, see? We don't get paid to take pictures. Uh, if you are in school, you need to concentrate on your schoolwork. You need to concentrate on your coding. You don't need to be out there on Instagram taking pictures of the code book. Come on. Uh, I'm a little bit old school. People may not like that, but that's okay. Uh, and we have a website, www.mascodingsolutions.com. 
I'm trying to get more, um, I think, educational products on there for you all. Uh, I just, um, I love doing what I do. I've always loved being a coder. Um, in the next several years, I'm probably going to retire from it. And I need somebody to take my place. So come on. Get your act together. Study hard. Work hard. And become the best coder out there. You'll never regret it, especially financially. Coding can change your life. And remember this. Coders get paid to think.